This is Josiah Plays, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain. Alright, I think at this time we're gonna go east. We're gonna try east out and see what happens. Cautiously, you creep along the passageway. After a short time, you reach a fork in the path, with the path continuing northwards. Eastwards, you can see a broad stone bridge. Okay, I know where we are now. We're on the approach to the Iron Cyclops. I know where we are now. I remember this big bridge. So last time we went the other way and we met the guy. Probably should have gone that way this time, but I failed to. But I did find a bench, which is great. At the fork, there is a bench of solid wood, and above the bench, a plank of wood with odd scratches which you cannot read. Sit on the bench and rest. You sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease and your tiredness wanes. It is good to take a break on your adventure. Plus five stamina. I'm up to 14, but I have no... I have no... I have no... I have no provisions, which is not great. It does not bode well for my success chances. So I can go north or east. So normally, last time I went east because I had to go east. Because I was forced to go east by the fact that my quest went that way. This time, I can go wherever I want, and I'm going to go north. You follow the passage northwards, and some meters further on, a passage runs off to the west. It is just about big enough for a human to squeeze through. You can hear some frightened voices echoing off in the western passage. Not me first. You go. Hmm. Let's check out the westwards passage. You enter a large, stony cavern, with stalagmites rising from the floor. Aside from the tunnel you just entered, there is another tunnel leading out of the cavern. Sinister-looking cobwebs cover the floor and walls. Two goblins are staring at this tunnel in absolute terror, and clearly are too afraid to enter. They are arguing with each other over who is to go in first. No, Nurk! You first! I know Thez dead! You go! Boss say me boss, you first, me keep lookout. The pair are so busy with their argument that they have not even noticed your appearance. You could quite easily ambush them. Let's just try talking to them and see what happens. You stride up to the stupid goblins and give a shout. The pair of them almost jump out of their wretched skins in fright. You raise your hands to show you mean no harm and the goblins exchange looks. They go? Us not go, they go, boss happy. A nasty smile oozes across the other goblin's face. Might get killed! Boss happy! A pair of them face you, unaware that you have heard everything they have said. You! Go in tunnels! Fire top spiders! Very bad! Kill Thres! Thres! The other one chimes in with glee. Kill spiders! Us go break! Without giving you a chance to say anything, the pair scamper off to take their hard-earned break. I guess I'll continue north. It looks like I'm going to be fighting some spiders. You stoop to enter a smaller cave, but thankfully you can stand properly once inside. Cobwebs thread across the walls, floor, and ceiling, and you can't help but feel incredibly unsafe. There are multiple tunnels leading off, with some that appear blocked. The west passage is covered with thick webs, and there appears to be movement inside. Oh, hell no to this place. Hear the skittering and the chittering and the... No, I don't like this. This is not good. The only other thing of note in this cave is the corpse of a goblin. It is partially wrapped in webbing. Let's search the body. As you approach the goblin's body, you notice something strange. It seemed to be moving. Your eyes must have been playing tricks on you. Kneeling down to look closer, you begin to inspect the body. Suddenly, the dried corpse burst open, and two skeletons leap out at you. Two skeletons from one goblin body. What? You fall back in surprise from the nasty shock. Horrified, you attempt to get back up and draw your weapon. Hey, Boss Pie, good to see you. How you doing, Boss Pie? Minus one skill, that's not great. I got an achievement. 
Goblin surprise, how did they even fit in there? That's what I'm saying! Finally, someone showed up! I wasn't going to be able to wait in there for much longer. Let's get the fool. So, two skeletons want to kill me. You scramble back to your feet from the skeleton surprise ambush. It is time to fight the skeletons. Oh man, one's got a spear. They both have spears, right? You can probably hit me from two away. So... I'm gonna move to this side. And... I'm gonna move... I'm gonna try twin charge strike here. Oh, it's gonna be perfect! Hit them both! Now I'm gonna try Blade Storm. Clash. Uh oh, come on, roll good. Alright, I won and I took one out, but I did get hit, unfortunately. This guy's gonna move here. Got him. Easy peasy! Although I did take damage, unfortunately, so that could have gone better. You lost two stamina, you gained six souls, you have defeated the skeletons. With the skeleton smash, you take a moment, catch your breath. You are still quite shaken from the shock. What is left of the goblin still lies on the ground. Otherwise, you could leave the cave before you encounter any other nasty surprises. No, I'm going to go ahead and search the goblin's remains. Ever so cautiously, you once more kneel down to the remains. This time, however, there are no surprises. You search over the body and discover a corked bottle filled with liquid. I will take the bottle. You take the bottle and instantly cry out in pain! It's a bottle of acid and it's leaking, goddammit! This game hates me! Everything you do, it just screws you over. Minus one skill again! I can't afford to lose any skill! With nothing else of interest in this cave, you decide where to go next. I decide to go home! Alright, let's head west. Look at all those eyes in the darkness. You begin hacking at the webs and make your way into the passage. After a moment or two, you realize that this was a poor choice as you are suddenly surrounded by hundreds of firetop spiders. There is a small brief sting and you drift off into a dreamless sleep. Did I just insta-die? Waking up, you discover that you have been wrapped in a cocoon. Struggling to free yourself, you realize you were unable to move. As you attempt to move your head, you see the corpse of another unfortunate adventurer. You are filled with a nauseous feeling of dread. Without warning, the body bursts open and a thousand small spiders swarm out. Nope, so much nope. Heading straight towards their latest meal. All you can do is scream in agony as they begin to feed on you. Soon you cannot do even that as they fill your mouth. What the fuck? This is horrible. Your last memory is of spiders feeding on you in the burning pain of a thousand bites. Your adventure ends here. That's a fucking horrible way to die! Why would you do that to me, game? Why? Why would you do that to me? This game is evil. I just got eaten by a thousand fucking spiders. That is not cool. Oh dear, it looks like the mountain has claimed yet another victim. Would you like to use a resurrection stone and return Aaron Gottspeed to the last resting bench you encountered? Yes, I want my hero to be resurrected. Alright, I have two resurrection stones left. Alright, we'll go north again, but this time we are not going west. Fuck west. Westward's passage can fuck right off. Although I feel like I should go in there and see what's the other direction. Alright, let's go. We'll go west again. I need to know what's the other direction if I go this up if I go this way. Um We'll talk to the goblins. We had the conversation already. We'll continue north. This time we're going to not fuck around with this body. And we're gonna head northeast. This still looks bad. Oh, that's a very large web. You enter the cavern and look around to see dozens of stalactites and stalagmites bordering the perimeter. Numerous drips can be heard. In the far corner is a very large, sticky cobweb. It is littered with bones and other detritus. 
presumably from unwary victims of a creature that calls it home. Near the back of the cavern, you will also come across a pair of boots, which seem to have been made quite recently. Let's try on the boots. The boots are well-fashioned, using deep red leather. They are much sturdier than your own and fit you well. You try a few steps, but are horrified to find that you have become clumsy, and the boots seem to be gripping your feet with considerable force. Why does everything have to fuck me over? Minus one skill boots, thanks for that. As you struggle to free yourself, you hear a crack and a smash as a stalactite falls from the roof. You crane around to see a large black shape shifting towards you. As it approaches, you turn cold. Oh, fuck! Fuck! It looks so menacing with that red coloration. I mean, it looks pretty horrifying in black and white, but you give it that fucking red coloration and all of a sudden it looks demonic. That is a horrible looking giant spider. No! Several meters away, a giant spider, at least three feet across, advances towards you on spiny legs, mandibles clicking nervously in anticipation of its next meal. You draw your weapon to defend yourself as the giant arachnid stalks you. Fight the giant spider. Oh shit. Oh no. This isn't gonna go well. It's gonna like, like webbing me and all kinds of horrible shit. I'm gonna move to the side. It hits six squares in front of it? What shit is this? It's gotta move forward and hit two squares attack. It's got a lot of stamina too. It's gonna it's gonna wreck me right now. It's gonna wreck me. This isn't good. I can't get out of the way. I can't get out of the way. I've been webbed. What does that mean? Targets will not be able to move or guard in the next round. Fuck! Oh, this spider's gonna fucking kick my ass. I knocked it back. Alright, I need to stay on diagonals from it. It's gonna move here. Alright, it's only got three stamina left, but I only have seven. And this thing's a motherfucker. Come on, high roll, high roll, high roll, high roll. No, I lost. Of course I did. High roll. I got it that time. It's only got one stamina left. Blade Storm! I won! But I'm almost dead. Victory, you are triumphant. You lost 11 stamina, and I have no provisions left to heal myself. None. And I gained six souls. You have defeated the giant spider. Almost exhausted after your awkward fight with the spider, you set to work on hacking the boots off. Eventually they come free. Plus one skill, that's nice. Achievement unlocked. There's no place like home. Wear a pair of red boots. Thanks for that achievement, game. You leave the cave. Is there any loot or anything? Because that was some bullshit. You squeeze through a narrow cave full of assorted rock columns. A sudden shaking causes you to stumble, and you look up at the ceiling of the cavern. Stalactites are hanging from the ceiling, but it looks like they're about to fall at any second. Suddenly, one falls directly in front of you and shatters to the ground. Let me guess, a skill check or a luck check? You better run through quickly before you get crushed. Alright, I have to roll a 9 or lower on 2d6. Which is a pretty good chance. Pretty good chance. Got it. Skillful. You need a 9 or under. Roll the score of 7. You easily outrun the falling stalactites. Dashing across the cave, you make it to the other side as the last of the stalactites shatter to the ground. You stop to catch your breath. It seems you are safe for now. Follow the west tunnel. Oh, this doesn't look good. 
This doesn't look good. A bottomless pit plummets deeper into the mountain. A narrow stone path leads to the other side, but stretched across it is a gigantic spider's web. You can see some unfortunate victims dotted across the web, wrapped up in silken thread. Clearly this web is still occupied. Hopefully you can make it across the web before the occupants return. Oh hell no! I'm crawling across a spider's web, across a bottomless fucking pit. That seems fucking like a genius move. No, turn around and go back the other way. I can't turn around though, I can't turn around, I gotta do it. You begin to cross the webbing. As you are halfway across, you hear an unpleasant skittering. Firetop spiders! You must make it to the other side and quickly! Alright, here's another skill test. Come on, I need to roll nine or lower. Nine or lower. Nine or lower. Nine or lower. Got it! You escape the firetop spiders. Scrambling across the sticky webbing, you make it to the other side. One of the firetop spiders tries to sink its fangs into you as you clamber off the webbing. Thankfully, you make it off the webbing in the nick of time. Alright, nick of time, good. Quickly you draw your weapon and cut the thick strands from the side of the pit. The rest of the web cannot hold the amount of spiders on it and begins to drift back towards the other side of the pit. The firetop spiders give a shriek of surprise and tumble into the inky blackness below. Leave the webbed bottomless pit. Yeah, this place sucked. I shouldn't have come this way. I just bounced across the pit. You enter a large cavern with a natural pool of water. Stalagmites have formed naturally, rising from the floor. There are a number of exits, some of which are blocked. While you have surveyed the area, you have failed to notice the three firetop spiders which are now almost on top of you. Their mandibles glisten as they close in, eager for a feast. Fuck this way. Never going this way again. Well, I'm almost dead, so... Odds of me winning this are poor. Oh, they shoot some bullshit. They are easy to kill, though. No! Oh. Come on, I need to win this clash. Oh, I didn't win. I'm dead. Defeat! You were overcome by your enemies. So that's my second death. Oh dear, it looks like the mountain has claimed yet another victim. Would you like to use a resurrection stone and return Aaron Gottspeed to the last resting bench you encountered? Yes, I want my hero to be resurrected. You know which direction I'm not going this time? Fucking west. I ain't going into those fucking spider caves again. Nope, not happening. So we head north. And then it's like, oh, look at this cool passage off to the west. You want to explore it? Nope. Carry on northwards. The passageway abruptly emerges from the side of a cliff face into a vast underground cavern. The rift extends above you, through the mountain, out of sight. The path you are following is now a ledge that skirts the cliff face to the left, while to the right it is nothing but a black, bottomless void. Projecting from the ledge, supported by great carved buttresses, is the broken end of a bridge over the crevasse. The rest is gone, but you can see a similar protrusion on the far side. Let's investigate the broken bridge. If you had a rope, you'd easily be able to snag one end on the other end of the other side of the bridge and use it to cross between the broken sections. Alternatively, the ledge continues to cling to the wall of the rift as it winds roughly northwards. I don't want to cross the crevasse because I know exactly where that leads to already. It's the other way we went originally with Alexandra, so no, I'm going to go back to the north because I've never been that way before. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. The precarious pathway you are following finally peters out. There is no way onwards, and you have no interest in climbing down the side of the crevasse into the impenetrable darkness below. 
You are just about to set off back the way you have come when you hear the beating of powerful leathery wings and a hideous apparition rising from the depths of the rift. Well, that doesn't sound good. It looks like a monstrous bat, but you can see ragged holes in its wings and tears in the furry hide of its body, through which can be seen bare bones. The giant undead bat is a blood wing. It gives a shrieking cry and swoops towards you, huge elongated fangs bared. Dark shapes flutter down from the cave ceiling as more bats dive down to join in on the feast. All right, let's fight the blood wing, I guess. Oh good, so one giant bat of death and also some other smaller bats of death. That's just fantastic. It's just fantastic. My blade storm handled business. Twin charge strike. Oh, I'm getting wrecked. I'm getting wrecked. Got you. Alright, I win. 323 souls. You're a triumphant. You lost 5 stamina and you gained 9 souls. You have defeated the bats. With no way forward at the end of the crevasse, there is nothing else you can do here. And I didn't even get any loot or anything for that. You decided to head back down the passageway. So there's no reason to ever, ever, ever come this way. This northern fucking way right here. No reason to ever come this way. You follow the ledge back southwards and reach the area you were at previously. Let's continue south. Oh, can I go back to the bench and use it again? I've been here. I can use the bench again. That's amazing. Alright. I can go west from here? Seriously? Well, shit. Let's go west. Cautiously continue down the rocky corridor, and stop in front of an open portcullis entrance built into the stone. The sound of clinking chains and monstrous growls can be heard. The corridor continues on to the west. Here's the guy. I figured if I went this way I'd meet this dude. This is the guy that we met with Alexandra, and he told us where we needed to go for our quest. Suddenly, a terrified young acolyte runs into you. His white, rune-embroidered robes are torn and smudged with dirt. He looks at you with panic in his wide eyes. I yield! Education is not worth this much danger, no matter how great the reward. Taking a moment to catch his breath, the student begins to relax. My name is Ian the White, he says. I am a humble student seeking entry to the School of Sorcery. He learned that he gained entry, but was deemed unworthy by the Elemental Masters. Elemental Masters, these may prove difficult to get past. Apparently the only way I can talk to him is by threatening him. Unlike Alexander, who can ask him all kinds of questions and shit. Let's threaten him for the lulls. Snarling fearsomely, you grab the young man's white robes and hold him up against the wall. I don't have time to waste listening to your blathering, boy. Tell me something useful lest you lose your head. You narrow your eyes to get your point across. Ian the White panics at this threat. The, the, the doors, he stammers. There's magic doors up ahead. It will open if you say open wide. That's all I know that will be of use to you. He struggles to escape from your grip and manages to free himself, falling to the ground. Taking the opportunity, he stumbles to his feet and then breaks off into a run, vanishing into the darkness. That should be some useful information at least. Hmm, what is this? Your eyes notice something that Ian the White dropped in his panic. 
It is a small bottle, and you pick it up. You've seen this kind of bottle before. It is a potion of invisibility. What luck. With nothing else to do, you decide to continue onward. Let's... I don't know whether I want to go north or go west here. Let's go west, I suppose. You reach a junction where the path turns north, through an archway held up by two pillars. A narrow passage also runs off to the west. Let's keep going west. As you walk along the corridor, you can see ahead that it is getting narrower. At one point you stoop, and as you do so, a deep, resonating laugh starts up around you. I'm gonna continue. This seems like a bad idea, but I'm gonna do it. Ignoring the laughter, you get down on your hands and knees and continue further into the narrowing passage. The laughter booms even deeper until the very ground itself begins to rumble. Then you notice that the ground is rumbling. Quickly, scrambling back in time, you barely manage to avoid hungry rock grubs. They burst through the ground, eager for a feast. Time to fight the rock grubs, I guess. Oh, those are new. I haven't seen those before. They look dangerous. Ish. Wind charge strike! Come on, win the thing! Why do I never win the thing? Oh, I guess I... I took damage, but I won. I didn't take damage. Never mind, I did win the thing. I won the clash and killed him. I thought he I thought he beat me in the clash. I was wrong. Lost no stamina, gained four souls. You've defeated the rock grubs. With the rock grubs disposed of and nowhere else to go, you curse yourself for falling for another of the warlock's traps. You decide to return to the main passageway. You head for the junction. So no, there's no point in ever going that way again. You arrive back at the junction and decide to instead take the only remaining path. Alright, I'll continue northwards. This looks ominous. You walk down the passageway and gasp at the sight you discover. Directly in your path is a large pair of wooden doors, carved to look like a menacing fanged mouth. A plank of wood is skewered into the ground, but you cannot read the markings on it because my character is illiterate. As soon as you begin to approach, you startle a nearby lizard. It darts off down towards the doors. They spring to life as though controlled by magic. They lift and drop dangerously, and as the lizard tries to zip through them, the doors fall and crush it flat. An interesting obstacle. How should I try and get past? I don't have the bull amulet, so apparently all I can do is try to sneak past the hungry doors. I only have one option. This is gonna hurt. The hungry doors crash down and you dive out of the way to avoid them. However, you are not quite so lucky and they graze you as you make it through. Minus four stamina, damn. And then I get to a bench, but all the healing I'm gonna get from the bench Almost all of it is ju was just lost from that thing. Alright, we'll sit on the bench. Get five stamina back. Continued onwards. If I hadn't just taken that four damage, I'd be back up to 19 now, which would be really good. I really need to get some more provisions somewhere. Several meters up the passageway, you arrive at a junction where you may turn either west or east. I'm going to try west again. You walk westwards along the passageway. You reach a door and about to open it when you hear a, rum a crumbling noise. You try to leap back as the ground gives way. Time to test my luck. I need a 7 or lower on 3d6 or 2d6, which um, is about 50-50 odds or so. So not, not great. I got it. Lucky, you leap back with excellent reflexes. You manage to leap quickly backwards as a pit opens up beneath you. The pit is about two meters deep and you should be able to lower yourself into it easily. Alright, I'll lower myself into the pit. 
Oh my god, what is that? Is that a giant troll? I'm about to die. I'm about to die. Looking around, you find yourself in a rocky chamber. Patches of slime have collected in pools on the floor, and there are bones and skulls scattered around the room. You are a little worried about the noise that the pit trap has made, but you are even more worried by the grunting you can hear coming from the chamber to the north. It's a giant fucking troll. So that was what the original illustration looked like. Got the bones, bones around his waist. He's got a fucking earring and shit. And there he is looking serious with his greenness. Before you can collect your thoughts, a large ugly head pokes around the corner and a troll emerges from the darkness. They have a cave troll. I just made a reference to the fucking Lord of the Ring movie. Should I use my potion of invisibility here? Or should I stand and bang? I don't like the sound of this. Uh... Fuck it, let's fight it. Prepare for combat with the brute. The creature is large and its long arms look very powerful. Fight the troll! Oh man, it did not give me very much room to maneuver around in here. This thing probably has, like, reach and shit. Alright, so it does a three square arc around it like this. Oh, and it regains stamina when moving. And it has ten stamina and eight skill. Fuck me. Come on, win the clash, win the clash. Yes, good roll! Alright. It's down to four. I'm doing good so far, but that doesn't mean that things can't go horribly wrong. Clash, win the clash, win the clash. Good roll, yes! It's almost dead. If I can just beat, hit it, beat it on one more clash... Oh my god! I beat the giant troll without even getting hurt! That was amazing! Victory, you are triumphant. You lost no stamina, you gained six souls, you have defeated the troll! Don't feed the trolls, ladies and gentlemen. Do not feed the trolls. With the troll defeated, you can now search the small cave to your right. Yes, let's search the cave. The cave is full of the detritus of previous victims of the dungeon. Although whether these poor wretches met their end at the hands of the troll or some other monster you cannot tell. Lying on top of some of the broken rib cages is a fairly robust looking rope. Let's take the rope. You pick up the rope and tug it to check that it isn't rotted. It seems sturdy enough so you put it in your pack. There might be something else buried deeper in the detritus. Do you want to search through it? Yeah, I'll search through it. Wincing, you dig through the remains of the troll's victims. Some things, like bones and skulls, are easy to sift through. But other bits of gunk and muck stick to you like glue. This seems gross. You gag at the awful stench. Eventually, you succeed in finding something. Your hand touches a round shape and you pull it out of the grime. It is a glass bottle filled with a shining green liquid. A potion of fortune. You wipe the worst of the muck from it, then put it in your pack. Nice, that should restore my luck, hopefully. Continue onward. Eventually, you reach the foot of a staircase cut into the rock. You ascend the stairs, and they end at a wooden door with rusty hinges. Listening at the door, you can hear some scratching sounds. You have no other option but to enter. So now I have two ropes, by the way. And a... Where's my potion of fortune? Oh, it's up here. And a potion of invisibility. Uh oh. Uh oh. This looks problematic. You try the handle and the door creaks open. You step into a bare room scattered with bones. There is an opening in the wall opposite and two doors to the east and west. Gnawing at the bones are three giant rats which stop to look at you as you enter. Oh, there's a picture. Those are some very plump 
kind of cute looking giant rats. Normally you see giant rat pictures and they're like all gaunt and like their fur's all fucked up and shit. These are like, these look like some friendly hamster giant rats. Each is over three feet long and their tatty coats indicate that they are fighters. You will have to take them on if you are going to get through the room as they no doubt see you as a tasty meal. Oh, if I had some cheese, I know where to get cheese. I've had cheese before. When I was playing Alexandra, I had some cheese. I don't remember where I got it, actually. But I had some cheese. Um... Maybe I got it by searching the goblin in the dwar in the dead dwarf and goblin room instead of searching the dwarf. I think that's probably where I got the cheese. Alright, let's prepare for combat. Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. You draw your weapon and wait for the rats to spring, as their leader prepares to- Do they have a leader? Did they democratically elect this leader? <laughs> as the leader prepares to jump, you shout loudly and leap forward at it. Your cry frightens off the other two and they scamper back a few paces. Fight the giant rats. Alright. Those are pretty fucking big rats. Alright, they're diagonal attackers. Wind charge strike! Blade storm! That hit absolutely nobody. Son of a bitch, I forgot he's gonna attack me from the diag. Sucks, I'm getting chewed up here. Blade Storm hits nobody. Great. At least Twin Charge Strike worked. Oh, I'm getting killed here by these fucking rats. They're really outmaneuvering me badly. I keep forgetting. I'm on diagonals to more than one rat, or or one rat, and I just keep letting them hit me over and over by not moving as I need to. There's one. Now I've got one on the diagonal to me, so I need to move back here. Oh, I can't believe I walked right into that hit! Gotcha. But I'm so badly I'm down to three stamina. I lost twelve stamina to those fucking rats. I killed the troll without even getting hurt, but I lost 12 stamina to the rats. That's fucking horrible. I'm about to die again. The vermin dealt with, you stop and examine the room more closely. Aside from where you entered, there are three other doors. 
You can vaguely hear the sound of glass breaking and screeching to the west. The door to the east is deathly quiet, while a strange smell vaguely emanates from the door to the north. I'm gonna try west again. The door is locked. I don't have the key. Alright, I'm gonna try north then. This looks like an ominous room. Leaving the rat room, you find yourself in a rough-hewn antechamber. It appears to be some kind of experiment lab. Tables with assorted vials, flasks, books, and other wizarding paraphernalia litter the room. But what catches your attention is a horrid mess near the middle of the room. An acrid smell catches in your nostrils and you see a pool of oozing grotesque goo. Thin wisps of vapor rise from the noxious smelling substance. A chalk outline appears to have been hastily scribbled around the pool and seems to be acting as a magical barrier between the ooze and the rest of the room. It seems that the goo is the result of some kind of accident and whoever was here has hastily tried to contain it. I'm going to examine the strange substance more closely even though this is probably really foolish. It would seem that the best way to proceed would be to touch the goo with something, but what will you use? Uh... Oh no. Oh no. I'm gonna use my weapon. Let's see what happens, just to see what happens. For fucking science, hashtag for science. Keeping the goo at arm's length, you poke it with the tip of your weapon, but to no obvious effect. What will you try now? I'll try a scrap of cloth. Tearing a scrap of cloth from your clothing, holding the fabric between forefinger and thumb, you lower it into the goo. As soon as the material comes into contact with the lurid green gunge, it starts to blacken and dissolve. What will you try now? I'll try a gold piece. You drop the gold piece into the goo and it vanishes immediately, leaving behind nothing but a wisp of acrid vapor. Minus one gold piece. Achievement unlocked. Make a wish. Throw a gold piece into the mysterious green goo. Nice. Nothing. I'm not putting my fucking finger in there. Leaving the chamber. You pass through an old mine shaft with wooden beams supporting the roof. And we'll continue on, I guess. I need another bench badly. This doesn't look good. This reminds me of where the spiders were. The mine shaft opens up into a wide cavern, which is effectively a crossroads. The ways north and west are high and wide clefts through the rock. The way to the east is much narrower with a lower ceiling. Let's try west. A bench! Yes! As you travel westwards, you are surprised to see light at the end of the tunnel. Before long, you find yourself standing in a cave mouth a third of the way up the mountain. Before you is a treacherous cliff face. The protruding overhangs and rocky projections might make it possible for a giant to scale the mountainside, but it would be a much greater challenge for anyone of a more diminutive stature. Enjoy the view. Take in, take in a picturesque view of Alancia. Another achievement unlocked. The view is incredible, however. The waters of the Red River sparkle in the sunlight, and you can even make out wisps of smoke rising from the dwarf settlement of Stonebridge several leagues away to the west. Plus one lock, that's nice. And a bench. A wooden bench is nearby, allowing you to sit for a spell and enjoy the verdant plains of Alancia. Alright, five more stamina. I'm back up to eight, so I'm, I'm not, like, in total disaster mode right now. You return to the cavern and decide where to go next. Apparently I can only go east. I can't go north anymore. That's interesting. I guess it's eastern path then. I didn't know I could do this. I didn't know I could... I didn't even know I could zoom out. I didn't know I could zoom in! I can zoom in and zoom out and fucking pan this thing around? I didn't even know that. Oh fuck, spiders. Here we go. You reach some stone steps that rise upwards and you begin climbing. A collection of stalactites hang from the ceiling and by the light of your lantern you see that the rocky projections are strung with thick spider's webs. 
As you reach a landing, your eye movement, or UI movement above you. Looking up in horror, you see several large red spiders starting to descend towards you, letting themselves down on strong silken threads. Fight the fire top spiders. Here we go. This is where I'm gonna die. There's only two of them. There's only two. And they only have three stamina apiece. That one's almost dead. That one is dead. Owned, actually. Didn't even get hit. You lost no stamina, you gained six souls, you have defeated the fire top spiders. Excellent. Please don't put me back into a whole area full of fucking giant spiders and shit. With the spiders all dead- oh, I'm going up this cool, like, stone staircase. The spiders all dead, you continue to climb the steps. You reach what appears to be a dead end, and feeling around in the darkness, you can make out the shape of a large lever set into the rock wall. Behind you, down the steps, you can hear the sound of movement. It sounds like more firetop spiders. With nowhere else to go, what will you do? While I would love to add to my 44 kills, maybe I should move on. Uh, well, we're gonna pull the lever. Look at this staircase, this is pretty cool. Pull in the lever. The lever feels stiff, and you need to apply all of your strength to pull it down. In the distance, you hear the clunking sounds of an unseen mechanism, and the rock that previously blocked your passage slides away, revealing a cave beyond. You can hear the rushing of water in the distance, and the air feels damp. You have a feeling that you are moving into a new section of the mountain. Enter the cave. Did I find my way to the underground river? The cave opens up into a chamber. After a moment, you hear the unseen mechanism again, and the rock wall slides back into place. The chamber is covered in sand, and there are two possible ways out here. One leading to what seems to be a cave in the southwest, and a passageway widening to the northeast. Let's check out the cave. Oh good, more spider webs. Damn it, why did I go in the cave? Why would I go in that cave? I saw the spider webs too. I just didn't really think about where I was going. You enter a small dry cave. Never go in the cave! The floor is covered with sand and the walls are thick with cobwebs. Two firetop spiders skitter down from the wall and approach, ready to attack. I gotta fight some more fucking spiders, apparently. He's gonna attack diagonally here. I'm gonna do twin charge strike, take him the fuck out. Oh, he attacked, didn't attack that. I, what, I, beat the, I beat him on the thing. Alright, so then what I'm gonna do is attack here. Attack here. Yup. Move back. Attack here. Attack here. Got him. I handled those spiders pretty easily, actually. Lost no stamina, gained six souls. You have defeated the firetop spiders. You finish off the firetop spiders and they collapse to the ground with a horrific shriek. Their legs curl up and they finally lie still. The only thing within the firetop spider's nest of interest is a rather sinister looking niche covered in thick webbing. This is probably a terrible idea, but we're going to investigate the web niche. You approach the small niche and begin to enter. The sticky webbing starts to cling to you as soon as you touch it. Why would I do this? Why would anyone do this? <laughs> I'm a crazy person. Slowly and awkwardly, you wander deeper into the cave, failing to notice the shining... Oh no. I'm about to get insta-killed by spiders again. The shining eyes behind you. There is a small brief sting and you drift off into a dreamless sleep. We've heard this before. Wrapped in a cocoon, we've heard this before. Thousands of spiders, yeah, they fill my mouth and I fucking die. I got insta-killed by spiders again. Damn it. Well, now we know. Do not investigate the niche. Never investigate the fucking niche. This is my last resurrection stone. 
My last one. So I gotta fight these spiders again. Charge strike! Come on, win the win the clash, win the clash. Cool, I killed them both with one move. Feeling good. Pull the lever. Go to the cave. Do not enter this cave under any circumstances. Instead, we'll head northeast. Yeah, I found the underground river again. But this is like... Oh, another bench? Oh, sweet! The passage run northwards, and ahead you can hear the splashing of an underground river. The air becomes cool and fresh. You soon reach a wide opening of a riverbank where the water churns as it passes between an unevenly spaced line of rocks that look like they might reach across to the other side. My training is going well so far. My deli must be at around 44 kills. And another bench. Oh, thank Firetop Mountain. Yes. By the sandbank is a carved wooden bench, a convenient resting place. To the east, the river flows through a cave in the rock. Sit on that bench and rest. Oh no, what's going on? It's a trap. You get ready to sit down and rest. As you prepare your meal, you notice a movement in the sand a couple of meters to your left. The movement becomes quite turbulent, and you spring to your feet, weapon at the ready. This is some Joe Deaver shit right here. Oh, well, here's a rest bench for you, psych! Suddenly, a large tubular head breaks through the surface, twists around in the air, and picks up your scent. The smooth, segmented body of a giant sandworm rears up and sways over in your direction. This game is so cruel! It's just cruel, this game! Good, good. It's got an illustration. That's fantastic. There's the original. There's the colored version. I'm getting put paid to. Yeah, for real, boss. I come over here, I think I find a rusting bench where I'm gonna heal up five points. Instead, giant fucking sandworm. Multiple giant sandworms, that's good. As it does so, a large orifice with short spiky teeth opens in what must be its head. Again, there is a rumbling underfoot and two more sandworms emerge from the ground. You must do battle with these creatures. Oh good. Oh good. This looks like, this looks fair. I love how the bench is actually in the battleground with the sign and everything. So here's the giant sandworm and two regular sandworms. This is ridiculous. It is ridic, ridic, ridiculous. It's so fucking ridiculous. Ridic, ridic, ridiculous. Oh, good. Win the clash. I lost the clash. Of course I did. Blade Storm. Win the clash. No, not with that roll. I'm about to die. This is about to be the end right here. It's about to be the end. Win the clash. Oh, but I died! I killed one of the worms, but I died. You were overcome by your enemies. Fuck me. Game over. Your adventure ends here. Turn to main menu. So that's two heroes that I've lost in the depths of Firetop Mountain. Let's try again. Yeah, we've talked to you before, Oriana. We don't care. Alright, this time I'm gonna try Lunica Akati. 
17 stamina, 9 skill, 10 luck. She's the luckiest of them all. She's a keen explorer. I like the sound of her. She's got keen eyes, so she'll notice things that would normally be unseen or ignored. So she's got like the high perception thing going on. And she's dexterous with great agility, speed, and precision. So that should help. We've already read her story in the beginning. She's got a front attack, a left slash, a poison strike, two in front of her to do poison damage. That should actually be really helpful. So we're going to be her this time. We're going to travel to the mountain. You rest at the base of Firetop Mountain from your two-day hike. Strange red vegetation spreads across its peak like a blood-red stain. This journey has taken you further away from the fishing village of Akkad, but your lust for magic, history, and art has led you to Zagor's lair. Research and rumors have brought you here due to the promise of unique magical treasures. You mainly seek the Amulet of Ashra, a powerful artifact that offers protection and good fortune to those who keep the memory of the old gods. The amulet was prized by one known as Cosbin Miniman, a master of fire elementals who wanted to use the magical rubies set into the jewelry for some evil arcane acts. You have tracked him to the mountain where he is now in the service of the evil warlock. Although warned by Anvil's villagers, you fear not the threats of the warlock's creatures and traps. As you confidently approach the cave entrance, you level your spear, ready for any encounter. Your adventure starts here. And there's the cave entrance. We peer into the gloom. And here we are at the very beginning. You see dark, slimy walls. And this is where we will leave this episode. So in our next episode, we will begin... We will begin the journey of Lunica Ikadi with her lantern, backpack, and rope, her spear and her dagger, and her provisions. A keen explorer. We will begin her exploration of the dungeon in our next episode. But that is gonna do it for this one. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays, The Warlock of Firetop Mountain.